Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc, and it's his birthday, so happy birthday, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, and happy birthday, Sybil. Oh yes, I, mine is the day before, it's so strange. Anyway, we are dealing with uh, a painting that we have been working on for quite some time. This happens with many artists where they work on a painting for ages. And this happens to be one of them. <laughs> Anyway, I have a show to uh, get this to, so I am in a hurry to finally get it done. I've been stalled because I'm trying to do equivalence, and it has to do with reflections. Now, this piece is for uh, reflections of an alternate reality, and I want to get some kind of uh, substitute for the reflections. I've done the underpainting, now we need to go to the next step, and I think we need to work. This is the image here. Um, I actually worked with an earlier image, which is uh, a little bit browner in areas. And uh, so now we're going to be working uh, with our China marker to do a transfer onto a tissue paper that's going to be collaged to the uh, painting in order to get this equivalence uh, where we're trying to simulate uh, a reflection on a window. So I know it sounds complicated, but <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go along. Anyway, the first step is to, to do the drawing of the, with the china marker. And I've done some already, that's why we have color on here. And it's fairly straightforward. Reflections of the lake and the branches on the trees. But the way uh, it's distorted, it shows like an alternate reality, something that is sort of maybe in another dimension. And it seems to me our contemporary times, uh, it doesn't seem quite real right now. There's so many strange things happening in the world. So as artists, we try and capture uh, these times and relate somehow to the way we work and how we think to them. So I'm just putting a lot more little branches in. You just pretty well want to cover. So and uh, as before, you know, line quality is important. You can do, you know, thick, you can do thin, soft, hard. Always make it interesting. And as always, I recommend, you know, doing a drawing or some kind of art form um, during the day, even if you're just arranging cauliflower on a plate, you know, it's artistic and do it well. <laughs> okay, enough lines. So we have our eight by 10 gel plate here and we're going to ink it out. And now I started off just with Prussian blue. These are the Amsterdam paints, of course, but I it was a little bit too blue. So I'm going to start with some black and my neutral gray. Just a hint. And then a little tiny bit of the Prussian blue. This is for the transfer. So brayering it out. And I haven't added any thinners or mediums. So as usual, um, you know, do it quickly. So good coverage. And then place your, and Josh is probably cringing because I'm making lots of noise with paper. Okay, so. Just lightly, I use my Baron for that because it's perfect for transferring the image. So quick transfer. Of the lines. 
Okay, we have a little bit of a blob. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to be ripping the paper anyway. No. Let's get our tissue paper on that. And it doesn't matter if your tissue paper is a little bit on the crinkled side. It might even help. Let's try and get it on there. Okay. You can see the crinkles, so I think that's all to the good. It just looks like more branches uh, further away. Okay, now this is a very delicate operation because tissue paper is very hard to work with. So we're getting a good, good coverage here. And then wherever there's blobs, I'm just going to rip it away. So we have some, um, if you'll notice the shapes, uh, I'm going to try and rip this kind of shape here. I tried it already and it's looking not too bad. I just didn't like all the blueness. So I sprayed it with water and then uh, scrubbed it back. And this part is actually quite nice. So we'll just give it a little bit more bizarre. I'm going to just try and rip that shape. You work small in little pieces. It should be no problem trying to glue it on. And then make sure that your edges are kind of rough. And we're pretty close to that shape. So what I'm going to do is position it, see what it looks like. There we go into that corner but I'll leave this there because that's quite nice and then we're just going to position it like that. I'm going to hold it and we're just going to use a brush and a, or maybe just my palette knife will do. And we're going to just apply right over top. Brush will work too. But Ever so gently. <laughs> it's a bit delicate. There we go. If it wrinkles a bit, it's all to the good. Now when that dries, it will be fairly transparent. A little bit underneath. There we have our first piece. Okay. And see, you can see the transparency. So we're not going to put it in a lot of places. It's just to get that feeling of, let's just look at our, like in here, where it looks like it's right on top of the dark areas. And it's like a reflective surface. Here's another. So we could do that piece in here. Let's do that. So this is really close to the actual image. It was picking up a lot of the background uh, paint because we had done it before, but that's okay. And then the new lines are on here. So just going to gently rip this and try and get, see this anvil image that's in, in here. We'll try and get this triangular shape. Like I said, I'm not going to cover the whole painting. It's just going to be here and there. And then probably I will paint some of the lightest areas. Maybe do this and then um, start doing some negative painting in between. So we still have a fair long ways to go. <laughs> My deadline is close to the end of the month. <laughs> but for artists, deadlines are a good thing. Maybe butter the back a little bit. That way we can place it. And it'll hold. And then from there on, we can get the medium on. You learn these skills as you go. And that works pretty good. So 
So it's a different way of working with collage. But it's also yeah, pretty interesting. Yes, that looks really good. Okay, let's do one more. And just ripping paper is kind of therapeutic. <laughs> We'll cover up. This is a previous one that I did that I really didn't like all that much. So let's have a look. Okay, so from here to here maybe, and then just angle it slightly. Okay, that looks not too bad. All right. As this dries, um, it will be very much more transparent. And as with the first one, I might just wet it down and then take some of it off. The point is to get this sort of reflective quality. And the other thing you can do is, um, supposing you want to reveal this more, well then, you know, do this kind of thing. Just take some of it off and reveal it some more. And just pull that piece off. You see what I mean? It's really quite, lots of exciting things you can do. Maybe even a little bit more in here. Then you really do get that reflective quality that there's a reflection going over top of something like in here, which is, you know, the nature of glass to be reflective. And that's the whole point of this piece because this is a window that's showing a, a really strange reflection our alternate reality if you like. <laughs> anyway have fun with this process and uh, uh, do post uh, on uh, gelatin plate printing enthusiasts uh, some of your work. I'm always checking uh, that group out and I post there every week as well if you're looking for more videos. Uh, do join us again here at Shoreline Studio. I'm so happy to um, show you these uh, tutorials and uh, slightly different ways of working. Take care, take care of your families, be kind to one another. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.